Hi everyone, Marissa here, Chief Entomologist at Thanksgiving Point. I'm sure a lot of you at home are probably putting up cobwebs and other spider-themed decorations to try to get in the Halloween spirit. And while you may be going for a spooky, creeptastic effect with your decorations, humans for thousands of years have actually appreciated spiders and their fantastic web-spinning abilities. So much so that they feature prominently in folktales and cultures all over the world. For example, in West African, African American, and Caribbean cultures, there are lots of stories about Anansi, who's a spider character full of skill and wisdom. And he often plays a trickster in his stories where he outwits the other characters in the tale. For example, he had to come up with four cunning plans to capture a python, a leopard, a fairy, and a hive of hornets in order to trade them for all the stories of the world owned by the sky god. Some Native American tribes from the southwestern United States also have stories about a spider woman or spider grandmother who features in creation myths. They describe how she envisioned the universe and thought it into existence by weaving the web of life. Some stories also say that she created humans out of clay and guided them through four realms and transformations until they finally became the people that live on Earth today. Spiders get their class name Arachnida from Greek mythology and the story of Arachne. She was a talented weaver who challenged Athena, who's the goddess of wisdom and crafts, to a weaving competition. Big mistake there. Most stories say that she won the competition, but she was also punished for her arrogance by being turned into a spider. And that's how spiders came to be weavers of webs. All spiders spin silk, that goes for true spiders and all the tarantulas. And in fact, a lot of them spin a couple different types of silk. And they use their spinnerets, that's these two finger-like projections right on the tip of this abdomen, and that's where all the silk is coming from. One of the main uses for silk for them is to create housing. So we've got a Venezuelan sun tiger right here who's hiding in the leaves of this plant, but you can see this housing made out of silk right here. Uh, these are both arboreal species. You can see they're great climbers. They're high in their enclosures. And since there's nothing to burrow into up in a tree, you have to create your own tree house. And so they use their silk to do that. So the way that tarantulas uh, release their silk is those spinnerets that I was talking about. They're like two little fingers. They just slowly lay them down and multiple strands of silk come out of them and they just kind of go back and forth and start to create a layer of silk. And so probably started off lining the walls, a little bit of this branch, and then very slowly connecting the wall to the branch to create a tunnel. It might take a few days for a tarantula to build a house like this. Generally, ours feel pretty safe because they live with humans and nothing attacks them and eats them, so they're, they take their time when they make their houses. I think if they went at it constantly, maybe in a day they could create a house like this, but generally it's very a slow process for the tarantulas that live with us. Another major use of spider silk is in making egg cases, uh, safe and sound for mama spiders to watch over. And what I have here is a Western Black Widow and she actually has two egg cases in her enclosure with her. She made one this morning. And we can actually see a color difference in the two of them. The newest one is kind of a bright white and the older egg case is more yellow and I can see a dark spot in the center of it. That suggests to me that the eggs are either about to hatch or they have hatched and those spiders are gonna wait to disperse until they go through their first molt. Some species of spiders, when they do hatch, they do something called ballooning. It's transportation to get away and disperse from all their brothers and sisters. And what they do is they let out a single long line of silk, they catch the air currents and they fly away off to new lands and adventures. So black widows don't have a neat, beautiful web like we're used to seeing. They actually have a very messy cobweb type of web, so you can see there's no rhyme or reason it seems to it. Uh, it's also a very strong silk. I've seen these guys catch lizards in their webs. So if you live in an area where there are black widows, something messy just like this, probably under a faucet or a trash can handle out by your shed, this is definitely black widow webbing. Probably one of the first uses for silk that we all think of is in prey capture. Spider webs catch the food for the spiders. And that is definitely true for some of the more famous webs that we're all familiar with. They're made by orb weavers. And that's that very characteristic spiral shaped web that spans between the branches of trees. And it has sticky webbing that actually catches those flying insects that are flying through that web. 
So spiders like funnel web spiders and tarantulas, I have a burgundy goliath bird eater tarantula in front of me, don't actually have sticky webs. They do use silk in prey capture, but it doesn't do the prey capture. What they do is I talked about that silk mat a little bit earlier that they lay down on the ground in their territory. That is gonna pick up the vibrations of little prey items walking by and that lets them know to run out and grab it and stab it with their fangs. And so right now we're about to feed a, a poor roach to our tarantula. All right, we're just gonna drop this roach right in here. As soon as it lands on the silk, our tarantula should grab it and have some nice yummy dinner. So right now, stabbing it with the fangs. That's partially to incapacitate it so we can't run away and escape. There's also some venom being injected here. And that's going to externally digest this roach because our tarantula doesn't have chewing mouth parts to chew it up. He's got more of a straw-like mouth part. So once this roach is liquidy, it's gonna slurp it up like a roach smoothie. And that will probably be gone in a couple of hours. Thanks for joining us today to learn about spider folklore and all the different ways that spiders use silk. If you like the video, like it and subscribe so you can learn more about bugs in the future. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments below or come visit me at the Butterfly Biosphere and I'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know about bugs. Thanks, see you next time.